everyone. Uh, it is currently New Year's Eve, so by the time you watch this, it will be 2024. Happy New Year. I uh, hope all of your holiday weeks, months uh, went well, and you got to spend time with family, friends, and uh, celebrate and all that good stuff. Um, last week's video was supposed to be a Christmas present for you all. But because of some technical difficulties, uh, there was no audio, so I had to take the video down. However, that means that this video is kind of a double feature. Actually, it's kind of a triple feature um, because I'm toward the end of the video, I'm going to give uh, kind of a, a quick overview on what the plan for Q1 2024 is. Um, but first things first, I have to share with you your Christmas present. And after that, I will show you what I've been working on since then. Uh, so basically two weeks of updates in the, the archive tool I've been building. So without further ado, let's get started. Uh, so let's, let's dive right in. Let's, let's click browse. Um, actually, we're not going to talk about browse quite yet. Uh, we'll come back to browse. That's, that's where I've been working uh, the last week or so. Uh, but your Christmas present is that I've added a definition browser. Now you might be wondering why I have a definition browser in a read only system. That's actually a fantastic question. Um, and the, the reason is it's actually kind of selfish. Um, I am obviously going directly to the defs. I'm going to the XML interpreting the XML and then showing it on the screen. Uh, and in a lot of cases, I have to figure out what the XML actually meant. Uh, in some cases, I'm getting help from people, um, you know, comparing screenshots of an actual system to the XML that is supposed to be creating that screenshot so that I can figure out um, what I'm interpreting correctly, what I'm maybe missing something on. Uh, and that's why it's really important uh, to get, for me, to get access to as much of the XML as I possibly can, um, which is actually kind of step two of, well, great, I have a definition browser. I can see the XML. Um, what does that allow me to do? Well, let me give you an example. Uh, one thing that I've been working on over the past week is uh, colors and fonts. Uh, that all tie back to themes. Uh, I don't remember if that's something that uh, was user facing so much in, in Sharewell, um, but a lot of the kind of the default colors are defined by a theme. So I would search for theme def, and then I don't think theme defs have views, but here are all the different themes that are part of Sharewell. And the default one that is used by the demo content seems to be this Sharewell blue funnel theme, uh, which is kind of interesting. I, I, I haven't figured out yet where the, uh, the theme that's in use is, is defined. Um, I searched for the ID in the database. I searched for Sharewell blue funnel, the name in the database. Haven't found it anywhere else other than this XML right here. Um, but I get all the right colors from it. So I'm pretty sure this is what's actually being used. Um, but yeah, there's a bunch of colors to find here. There's a bunch of uh, fonts. So I guess, you know, whatever this is uses Verdana at 10. Um, most things use source sans at 11. Um, I'm actually not using source sans in, in my tool, but I am pulling out the font size. And then some things have like bold or something like that. Um, so that's been helpful. I've been able to uh, just pull this up uh, through the tool as opposed to going to my SQL database, which is what I was doing before. I actually exported a bunch of text files, well, XML files um, of the particular defs that I was, I was, that I cared about. So I have this directory with a bunch of defs just, you know, strewn all over the place, basically. 
this is going to help me out quite a bit. Now, the second thing that this helps with is because I'm interpreting a system, I'm not defining the system, uh, you know, the way Sharewell would have done. I'm interpreting the system. I want to make sure that what I'm doing matches with the XML in the database. And it would be onerous, to say the least, to try to pull up every single def and how it uh, influences the UI. So basically, if I were to go to browse and pull up you know, every possible form def and every possible grid def, um, it, it would be a pain. Instead, what I can do is derive a, a schema from the XML and then analyze all of the XML in the database and make sure that it matches up with the schema that I'm actually building my tool on top of. So basically, I'm, I, can, I can validate the foundation and then build everything else on top of a, a firm foundation. Um, and that's something that I think um, Sharewell kind of struggled with as well. I don't think Sharewell ever had an XML schema uh, you know, defined in say like the XSD language. Um, so that sort of validation wasn't necessarily something that, that, that they, they could have done as easily. So that's why I'm going down this route first and foremost, even though it's a read-only tool, because I want to make sure that what I'm doing is faithful to the XML that's in the database, which means that I can increase my confidence that I'm doing the right thing based on what I'm seeing in the XML uh, with the demo database without having to run every single permutation of the demo database, which further increases my confidence that when I run this on your data, I don't need to know necessarily what your data looks like in order to know that my tool is going to run successfully on it. Because I've validated the schema against the samples that I have, and because the samples that I have continue to validate against the schema as I, as I interpret more and more things, I can be that much more confident that because you have built your XML using Sharewell, my tool will interpret it correctly. Um, now, as we get into the future and I enable uh, some, some writability in the system, having that schema will be super important because I, then I can validate that those writes are accurate regardless of how they're performed. You know, if it's through a, a def editor style interface, which obviously that'll be possible with, you know, that's kind of the next layer on top of the definition browser. Um, I'll still be able to validate that the XML that you've created is going to do something reasonable within the tool. It's not going to totally break everything. Um, and it'll further reinforce that as I build authoring tools, I'm building authoring tools that actually build valid XML that will continue to work in the context of a fully functional system. So all that to say, this is kind of the very basic element, the the foundation of everything. So I'm looking at the time I've talked for a while. I think that's enough talk about the definition browser. Let's talk about the biz op form. Uh, so like I said before, I got a screenshot of an incident form and I'm pretty sure it was the incident that I just double clicked on. Uh, and that showed me that there were lots of places that I wasn't uh, faithfully reproducing the incident form. So a lot of new things have happened in the last week or so. Um, this status indicator is new. The border, the color that's being pulled from the theme, the font sizes and styles. So this is both. Both of these are bold font. Those are being pulled from I think the theme as well, but at least those are being pulled out from the the, the font. Uh, style that's being applied to those particular uh, controls. Uh, all of these have the right font size. There's still some weirdness going on over here. I'm not quite sure why that's wrapping. It shouldn't be. I think I'm pulling the right sizes uh, for, for those uh, pieces of text right there. 
And then some of these titles are, are showing the right uh, sizes and obviously they're bold. Uh, and you can see it's, it's really starting to look a lot more like the actual Sharewell Biz Op form. Uh, there are still a couple things that are different. Like, obviously, these are all text boxes. I'm not making them text boxes right now because this is just a read-only system. So those are kind of lower on my prior priority list. And like I've said in all these videos, if that's something that's important to you, let me know. If it's really important that it look like a text box, that it look like it came from Sharewell, let me know. Uh, and I'll add it to the list and, and bump it up on the on the list of priorities. Uh, um, there are still, like this isn't really a button. This is actually a bit of text that I think is supposed to be centered and, um, you know, centered both horizontally and vertically. The tabs, uh, not all of these are supposed to be visible on every single bizob. Same thing here. Um, so I've got some some other expressions that I just need to uh, evaluate, really. I've got the expression engine functioning. A bunch of different types of expressions are being evaluated. Like this is an expression and this is an expression. Most of the things on the screen are expressions. Those are all being evaluated. I just need to make sure that I'm evaluating the right expressions in all the right places. Um, yeah, you can see I got background. The background color is showing up the way they're supposed to. The rectangles have rounded corners. I don't think the rounded corners are exactly the same, um, but that's one thing that's not defined in the XML. So I don't know exactly what they're supposed to, you know, exactly how much that, that corner is supposed to be around. Uh, but that's that's been the big thing over the last week is really getting this the the biz up form looking as much as possible like the actual sharewell biz up form. Um, yeah, and if there are specific aspects that you want to see uh, or are curious if I've done or if I haven't done, uh, let me know. Leave a leave a note in the comments, and I'll I'll get back to you. Um, and then finally, uh, in this video, I want to talk a little bit about what comes next. So obviously, there's still some rough edges on the on the BizHub form that I want to uh, square away. Um, I think the grid is pretty much uh, hammered out. That there wasn't really a whole lot going on there. Um, there might be some expressions that uh, that I'm not I'm not handling, but uh, let me know. Let's get your data into the system and we can find out if if the grid is not showing up the same way that it's supposed to be. Um, but yeah, the uh, Q1 is really going to be all about getting your data into the system or getting the system running on your data is, is, is probably a more accurate statement, right? Because um, I, I will run this wherever your data is. If you want to have it in your data center and you want to run this on premises, Let's make that happen. If you want to run it in your AWS account, your Azure account, I can totally do that. If you want me to host everything, I can do that as well. Though that probably raises a whole bunch of extra questions that we can we can certainly get through. Um, you know, I want to make sure that your data is secure and uh, you know keeps the lawyers and, and the compliance folks all happy. So let's talk about that. Let's make that happen. Uh, and then after that, looking even further uh, out beyond, beyond Q1, really, uh, I want to get into the territory of making this a read-write system uh, and starting to execute one steps and that sort of thing, making it a truly functional sharewell clone. Um, and then even further beyond that, then we can start talking about uh, authoring and you know modifying your system um, so that you could, you know, and all the projects that you had planned on your sharewell system, you can continue to do them just with this instead. So let me know your thoughts. Let me know your requirements, your questions, uh, anything you 
we're hoping to see or are hoping to see in the near future and haven't yet, uh, let me know in the description, in the, the comments below. Uh, if you want to schedule some time with me, there will be a link in the description uh, to schedule some time on my calendar, as well as my email address. Let me know. Let me know what you're thinking. Uh, I'm always happy to talk, answer questions, uh, and let's let's get everybody's sharewell data uh, up and running again, so that come uh, this day, three three years from now, at the end of 2026, everybody has a path forward. Uh, no one is stuck trying to figure out what to do with all of this data they generated in Sharewell. So let's do it. Happy New Year. Have a great 2024.